I have a lot of reasons to thank the organizers because a big part of what I know in physics I have learned from them. So thank you very much. I'm really happy to be here. And uh, the title of my presentation is Finite Time Quantum Planes in the Extended Hubbard Model. And I will start with an introduction in which uh, I will uh, talk a little bit about quantum planes, this protocol of quantum planes. Then I will give an example of experimental motivation. Then I will move to our more recent work and define the problem that is the model and the quench. Then I will go to our main results and finish with the conclusions. Uh, so a, a quantum quench is a protocol to study the out of equilibrium dynamics of a closed system. Uh, we start from a given state that can be the ground state of a given Hamiltonian. Then we change the Hamiltonian, that is, we change the system parameters, and let the state to evolve with this new Hamiltonian. Uh, since the system is isolated from the environment, the uh, evolution is unitary, but it's non-trivial because the initial state is not a negative state of the final Hamiltonian. So um, this kind of study has attracted more attention in something like two decades, mainly due to the simulation of model Hamiltonians in optical lattices with cold atoms. So uh, in this system, uh, in this experimental framework, the system can be well isolated from the environment. So it evolves without loss of coherence for long times. And the system parameters are highly tuned in these optical lattices, which help us to uh, study this um, emulating quantum quanks. And numerically, uh, quantum quanks can be studied through these uh, techniques of tensor networks. And in this work, we have used time-dependent density metrics renormalization group in the formalism of metric product states. Uh, so this is an experimental example, and the authors have studied uh, interaction quaints in Hubbardian optical lattices uh, to emulate this bose hubbard model, and more specifically, they have started from a uh, mott insulating phase, and they have suddenly lowered the, the lattice potential, which corresponds to decrease the interaction. And they, after this quench, they have observed the formation of these quasi-particles, which are doubles and in red and hollands in blue, that propagate ballistically in opposite directions. And this propagation of uh, these quasi-particles leads to the formation of light cones. Uh, this is the uh, measurement uh, of correlation functions between two sites, and uh, as a function of the distance between the sites and time. And they have observed that the signal for, this, um, uh, for the propagation of the correlations travels with a well-defined velocity. Um, this one is just to show that uh, a couple of years ago, we have obtained a light cone numerically. This work was done with Maria Carolina Guiar and Rodrigo Pereira, which are here. And we have performed a um, local quench in which we have connected two different spin chains, one in the liquid, uh, this is described through this XXZ spin half model, and uh, part of the chain was in the liquid, liquid, liquid phase, a critical phase, and this one was in the ferromagnetic phase, and then at time t equal to zero, we coupled these two chains, and we have observed the formation of light cones for the magnetization, this is the local magnetization at the right chain that was initially in the critical phase, so zero magnetization. And the important point here, this is just an example, I will not give details, but the important point here is that for some parameters of the right chain, we have observed not one, but two light cones, actually two wave fronts that um, uh, was driving by two different quasi-particles, spinons and bound state quasi-particles. And we have observed this both for local magnetization, as uh, shown here, as a function of time and site, and also for the entanglement entropy. Uh, so this can also be observed numerically and, and experimentally. Now I will move to our more recent work, 
And it was done with Maria Carolina Guiar and Val Brito and also Isaac Carvalho. He's a Carol's PhD student and he had present a poster yesterday, but if you didn't have the opportunity to see this, you can talk to him. He has done the numerical calculation of this work. So, um, and they are all from UFMG. And in this work, we are interested in the formation of spin and charge ordered phase, starting from a metallic state. And for this, we have performed a finite time quantum quench in the extended Hubbard model. Okay. Uh, so the model and the quench, as I said, we have uh, used the, uh, the time-dependent uh, extended Hubbard model. So uh, both the on-site interaction, mu, and near neighbor interaction, v, vary in time. Uh, this v is a... Uh, uh, nearest neighbor interaction here, not the disorder <laughs> parameter from Vivian, okay? Um, and uh, here I show a schematic representation of the phase diagram. This is just a cartoon. Um, for repulsive uh, interactions at half filling in the thermodynamic limit, and in, in equilibrium, this, uh, the, this phase diagram is well known, and we have... Um, a uh, spin dense wave phase, which is a moth insulating phase for large O. We have this uh, charge dense wave phase uh, for large V, which is also an insulator with uh, gaps for both spin and charge excitations. And between these two, we have this uh, bound order wave, also insulating phase. So at half a feeling, the system is metallic only at zero U and V, so only for uh, uh, non-interaction systems, and we are interested in the formation of this spin-ordered and this charge-ordered phase starting from the metallic point. Okay. Uh, so um, we have performed numerical calculations use time-dependent density metrics renormalization group, mainly for a system of 17 sites. So this is small, but although it's small, this is already enough for us to see uh, the formation of these ordered patterns in, in charge and spin. And we have confirmed that the main results does, uh, are also observed for larger systems, as I will show. Uh, and, um, okay, plus first, please first uh, forget about these arrows. I will just show that this small system is enough to, to study what we want to see. And this is the charge order, uh, the, the charge dense wave order parameter, and the spin dense, dense wave order parameter for the equilibrium, so obtained with a density matrix renormalization group um, for this small system. And we have observed this phase, this uh, charge dense wave phase and spin dense wave phase. Uh, even for this small system, uh, this is similar to the thermodynamic limit, and we have this in, in this region. And especially for these values, V equal to 3 and U equal to 6, we have the saturation of the order parameter at values close to the ones obtained at the thermodynamic limit. Um, so now I will talk about the quench, and then you can look to the arrows. It indicates the, the paths of the quench that we performed here. Uh, so we start from um, the metallic state, okay? Uh, so this point, U and V equal to zero, and we have increased uh, V and U and R, U, <laughs> uh, uh, linearly in time until these final values uh, shown by these arrows. And the uh, humping, uh, humping time scale of the quench uh, is controlled through this parameter tau v, these parameters tau v and tau u. The, the total time of the quench are proportional to, to these taus. Okay? Um, and uh, so this is the idea of the quench and, and the equilibrium. And then I will show some results. Here at the right, um, we have the spin and the charge profile along the chain, the 17 sites. And uh, here at the top, we have the initial state, the equilibrium initial state, so it's metallic, it's uh, symmetric in both uh, spin and charge, okay? 
And these last panels are uh, the equilibrium results for these final uh, states. So um, here we have the equilibrium result for this red dot here. So this is inside the charge dense wave phase, and we have this interchange pattern for charge. And this black, uh, these results here are equilibrium results for this black dot here. And we have this interchange pattern for spin, okay? And in the middle, we have results not at equilibrium, but just, just after the quench. We perform the quench and look to the, the states. Uh, and this was obtained with different taus. So uh, smaller taus are faster quenched, okay? And uh, this one is quench number one, uh, uh, a very fast one. So this is a, a sudden regime, a sudden quench. And for this case, uh, the final state is equal to the initial one. Uh, the, our initial state is a, a critical point at the thermodynamic limit, so we need uh, a smaller quench for the system to evolve. Okay. Uh, for intermediate values of tau, the system evolves, but it's different from the final uh, equilibrium state. And for large taus, the uh, final state is equal to the equilibrium one. So we have an adiabatic evolution in which the uh, instantaneous state follows the equilibrium ground state. The same three regimes, sudden, intermediate, and adiabatic, were also obtained for the quench towards the spin dense to wave phase, okay? So until now, I have shown results for T equal to TF at the end of the quench. Now I will show results during the quench. So as a function of time from zero to TF, uh, as a function of U and V, as it varies from zero to the final value, okay? And uh, I will start with these two quenches, number one and number six, in which we turn on only one interaction, either U, V, to the quench towards the uh, charge dense wave state, or U to the quench towards the spin dense wave state. And later I will show results in which we turn on both interactions following these other arrows, okay? Um, this is the uh, charge dense wave order parameter uh, as a function of V, so this is uh, for the quench number one, uh, the, this path number one, and these are different quenches performed with different times. And in green, we have the gro instantaneous ground state uh, result. So it's initially zero because we start from a metallic state and then it in, uh, increases and saturates for a finite value. Okay. Um, for a very fast quench, we had this uh, blue curve in which the, uh, the final state is is frozen at the initial state, and uh, we have this intermediate regime, and for uh, tau larger than 12, we have this adiabatic evolution in which the uh, instantaneous state follows the equilibrium ground state. Uh, these are results for quench number six, so the SDW order parameter as a function of U varying in time, uh, again, in green we have the, the ground state, and we have this sudden quench with a frozen result, and an intermediate one, and uh, we have also the adiabatic regime. The difference is that here we reach the adiabatic regime for smaller taus, that is fast quench, uh, already uh, adiabatic here, to the quench toward the spin danced wave phase. Um, um, now I show results for the entanglement entropy. I, I think I, I don't need to do define ent the entropy because we don't have done this very well. And, um, this is the entanglement entropy for a bipartite uh, for the system partitioned at the middle, and um, the green one is the ground state here for quench number one. So uh, to charge ordered. Uh, state, and here for quench number six, spin. And in both cases, we have this green line that is the equilibrium result, 
and, it, uh, and the entropy decreases because we start from the metallic state and it goes to a more ordered state. Um, let's look first to this one, which is simple. This is the quench toward the spin danced wave state and uh, the entropy sticks frozen for the sudden quench and decreases for intermediate and adiabatic regime. For this quench toward the charge danced wave state, so this that quench number one. Uh, for intermediate uh, time scales, uh, this one tau equal to 0 0.33, 2.0, 2 and, and 3.5, we have an increase of the entanglement entropy uh, for values larger than the, uh, the initial entropy, the, the metallic uh, entropy. So uh, this is another important difference between these two quenches. Here we have observed this enhancement of the entanglement entropy in intermediate uh, time scales. And um, okay, to, to uh, characterize the adiabatic regime more precisely, we have studied the uh, fidelity between the evolved state and the instantaneous gro uh, equilibrium ground state. And for an adiabatic uh, evolution, this needs to be close to one. Um, and here I show uh, the, fide the fidelity between the final state and the final uh, equilibrium ground state. And it goes uh, to one, both for quench number one and quench number six for large towns. But here we have different uh, scales, so we can see that for this quench towards the spin danced wave, we need uh, smaller times or faster quenches are already uh, enough to, to obtain this adiabatic uh, uh, evolution. Um, so until now, I have shown results only for quench number one and six. So we have very only, uh, we have turned on only V or U and the other interaction was equal to zero. Uh, now let's see the results for these other quenches in which we turn on both U and V. So we have three quenches towards this charge danced wave phase and three towards this uh, spin danced wave phase um, and following the, these waves. Uh, to put this, uh, these results for the six um, quenches, six paths together, we have defined this distance function which is the summation in time uh, of the difference between a, a given quantity evaluated in the instantaneous state and the same quantity evaluated in the instantaneous uh, ground, equilibrium ground state. Um, and here I show the distance function for the order parameter and for the entanglement entropy for these six paths. So each line corresponds to one path in the uh, uh, for the quench, and each point corresponds to one quench performed with a given time, okay? And in, um, in red, we have this quench to the charge danced wave phase, and in black, we have the quench to the spin danced wave phase. Uh, the solid lines, this one and this one, corresponds to the results that we have seen in the previous slides, because these ones are for u equal to zero and, uh, and v equal to zero. And it summarizes the main results that we have already seen because the, uh, both difference of the other parameter and the entanglement entropy goes to, to uh, zero for large cells, but it goes to zero faster in the spin danced wave uh, case. And we have observed this enhancement of the entanglement entropy here in, in CDW. Uh, but more important is the comparison between these different red curves and these different black curves. And um, we see a, a small uh, decrease of the difference as we turn on U in, the, in this range to the charge the danced wave phase, and we turn on V in this quench for the spin danced wave phase. But the more importantly is, is that um, the 
qualitative and even the quantitative results are almost the same if we turn on both interactions. And uh, it seems, to us, it, it seems non-trivial because uh, when we uh, include the nearest neighbor interaction in the Hubbard model, we break the, the integrability and it could change the out of equilibrium dynamics of the system. Um, and now I will show results for different system size. Um, uh, the systems are not that large, but a little bit larger than the one that I show. And these curves are, are similar to the previous ones, but these different curves are, are not for different paths, but different size. And we have selected only one path to the CDW quench and one for the SDW quench. And we observe that the adiabatic regime is reached for smaller time, sorry, larger times as we increase the system as expected. Um, but the main difference between these two coins are, uh, are, are the same. So um, then I will move to our conclusions and uh, we have performed this time-dependent density matrix, matrix renormalization group uh, to study the formation of charge-dense wave and spin-dense wave phases. Uh, and we have used this um, time-dependent um, uh, quench uh, uh, in the extended Hubbard model. And we have observed these three, three regimes, the impulse, a uh, uh, sudden when uh, Southern and intermediate and a Jabatic one, depending on the ramping time scales. And we have observed an increase in the entanglement for the quench towards the charge dense wave phase. And to prevent that this um, entanglement excited states participate on the dynamics, we need slower um, quenches to reach G this adiabatic regime in charge dense wave quenches. Uh, as compared to spin danced wave uh, quaints, and the breaking of the system integrability uh, uh, the, does not produce important uh, changes in this non equilibrium behavior during our quaints. So, here we have studied the evolution during the quaint, and the next step is probably to study the, the free evolution after the quaint especially for this intermediate regime in which we have the creation of uh, entanglement and, and all this. So thank you very much for your attention. So thank you, Elena, for this nice talk. So I see questions. Thanks. Hi, Elena. Hi. Yeah, nice talk. Uh, let me see. I was wondering, uh, you sh show, uh, I think it's a phase diagram, you, it's a charging state way as, as being, as being uh, uh, way also. Uh, yeah. Like was, this one. I was wondering, yeah, maybe. Uh, this, this white line, this is a phase transition, or there is an yeah. interplay between these phases? Uh, this, this line is uh, a schematic representation for this. Uh, let me. The, uh, this, is, this line is uh, u equal to 2v, and in this region there is this bound order wave phase that is uh, an isolating phase between these two. So there is this transition between these two with this phase in the okay, middle, but we haven't explored this. Uh, we have avoided this region, <laughs> actually. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, one more question, please. Uh, you showed the fidelity. Uh, Plot maybe um, I was wondering about because you showed that both yeah right both um, for okay both have asymptotically for this number one so it's a difference between but it's almost similar results there is a, uh, some difference this, because one is charging the wave and the other is spin density wave or yeah yeah this this one oh. is uh, through this path. And this one, in the other one, is this path. So but both number both one and number six. Both, uh, if we perform the, the, uh, the evolution very slow, uh, the fidelity is 
close to one, which means that we perform an adiabatic evolution in which the, the instantaneous state uh, follows the equilibrium one. But the equilibrium one is different in this case and in this case because here we have the formation of the charge danced wave mm -hmm. ordering and this one. And the, the time for the, the quench to be adiabatic is also different in both cases. Okay, okay. Nice. The, the, the x uh, uh, here is different, I think, the, the scale here, so. Thank you. Elena, very nice talk. Uh, so yeah, I still uh, have a question regarding the difference in these time scales for V and U. Uh, did you did you perform any calculations? My my guess is that it would be somehow related to the inverse of the charge gap and the spin gap. Did you calculate those yeah. and and see? Um, no, actually, um, we have a, a small system, so uh, to to calculate these gaps. Uh, it changes for the thermodynamic limit. It changes a lot with the system size and, and all this. But I agree with you that probably it is explained through these um, energy scales that are related to charge uh, order in, in uh, to charge order and spin order because one scales with B and other with the opposite of U. So we mentioned this in, in our work. Um, but also we have observed this increase in the entropy. So um, we need to perform slower quench to avoid this increase in entropy. So um, it seems that for uh, this quench towards the charge danced wave, uh, there are these excited entanglement states that participate on the dynamics if it's not slow enough. So um, I don't know if it's just uh, the only explanation is these gaps, um, because this is a non-equilibrium result. And, but, uh, Yes, I continue about this uh, question. So do you have uh, an hand waving argument to explain why the entanglement is growing, actually? It's a, a bit surprising, just before dropping then. Yeah. Uh, uh, this was observed for uh, quenches in the in spin chains. So this is not something that was never seen before. And it seems that depending on, on the, the time scale of the quench, uh, there are these excited entanglement states that participate on the dynamics. So the, uh, um, the instantaneous state is a linear combination of a lot of uh, eigenstates of the instantaneous Hamiltonian involving these ones that are more entanglement. It was observed, uh, but in these works uh, related to, to uh, spin chains, it happens close to a critical point. And here we don't have this critical point but it's not that new, so I don't know. Um, okay. Just a curiosity, why do you use odd numbered, uh, an odd number of sites and yeah. even a prime number of sites? <laughs> yeah, there is uh, this problem of magnetization, uh, the general sense of magnetization. If we have, uh, 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 it, uh, odd number of sides, and it depends on the, the parity. We have these degenerate senses that we need to break, and, 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 and this is why. But actually, we can break these degenerate senses with uh, a small field in, in one side, and, but this is one choice in the numerical calculations. And we have further questions. So I do not see any immediate questions. So let's thank Elaine again. OK, so this closed the morning session. And we'll meet here, too, for the afternoon session. So thank you all. Thank you.